Hey guys, what's going on? So today we are discussing next week's major update. Uh, they left a developer note here on their official stove site. It reads, hello, this is super creative. We would like to give you all a more detailed look at what you can expect from next week's major update and share with you all some of the balancing changes ahead of time. In this major update, a new special type of labyrinth will be added called Asma Callus Labyrinth, as well as a new challenge, Archdemon's Forces. As far as balancing goes, there will be some improvements to skill enhancing and buffs and nerfs are planned for several characters. Likewise, to help compensate for these nerfs, we will be introducing a special new recall system. So I think this is the very first game I've played where if you weren't happy with the nerfs or if the nerfs were too extreme, you could get pretty much all the resources back from that character. So I think that's a really awesome thing they're doing there. Also a note and a very important one at that, saying things in here can change at, at any given time before the update on the 12th of December. So this isn't end all be all, but it probably is a pretty good idea about what will be happening. Also, if we see any red or bolded text, this is things they have added since they first posted it. All right, so first we're taking a look at the new raid labyrinth. This will veer away from our conventional explorer style labyrinth and instead it is a raid type. It'll introduce multiple raid bosses for players to hunt. You'll need two compasses to enter, but you'll get much more powerful items than those from the normal labyrinth. So we can see five different bosses here, uh, each with their own little backstory. So unfortunately we can't really see anything about like what they're doing and whatnot. Uh, but uh, what the hell are those? Little, little flies? That's weird. So it looks like there are unique rewards for each boss. They'll take a week to regenerate. Rewards you can get, equipment with new item set effects, items exclusive to raid boss monsters, and galaxy bookmarks. Wow. Oh, but that's cool. It says the raid boss's descriptions, regeneration conditions, and item drop tables will be compiled into a boss journal and supported by additional functions to be made available for the players to confirm before entering the raid labyrinth. So this little paragraph is basically just saying you need to be strategic in using your morale if you want to take more than one raid boss. We also get a new NPC that sells powerful things, also things to help you in the new labyrinth. And it looks like some of those things can only be purchased with the exclusive currency you'll be getting from the royal capital of Osmakalis. We will be getting Hell difficulty two weeks after it's released. For now, we'll just have normal difficulty. And it's expected to be the most challenging PvE content in Epic 7. All right, so that's pretty exciting. Looking forward to that. Also, all those nice rewards. I love me some rewards. And we got some new set equipment. We got the Unity set, which increases dual attack chance. Immunity set, which grants immunity to self for one turn at the start of battle. And the Rage set, which increases damage dealt if the target has a debuff. Hmm, that Rage set sounds pretty interesting. I mean, there's usually at least some forms of debuffs going on on the enemies. Just depends on how much it increases damage. And you can get these sets from the new Labyrinth. They say they also plan to make it available in challenge mode. Four and five star heroes are getting buffed. Four stars will have all stats buffed by 3% and five stars will have all their stats buffed by 6%. I don't really feel too much about that. I'm not sure three and 6% are really gonna make a massive difference anyway. And you know, there are some really, really strong three stars that even outshine some five stars. So I think it's fair that four and five stars just have a little bit extra stats. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they do already, but having a little bit more, you know, I guess that's fair. This was also something I found rather interesting. The Mulligors are required to max out a uh, grade four and five star are getting significantly reduced. You can see here, five stars needed 130 to max them out. Now they're only gonna be needing under 80. That's crazy. Don't worry if you've already used a ton of Molagora in your hero's skills, you will be compensated for that. And here's where we get into the meat of the uh, developer note, or maybe the thing that's gonna be a little bit controversial. So we already knew this first thing was coming. The defense buff will be decreased by 15%. So I'll be honest, I don't know exactly what 15% means. <laughs> if they're talking about just 15 less as a whole, like we would have to picture the defense up buff at 100% currently. And if it would just go down to 85%, that's not a big deal. But for example, if a defense up always, for example, increases defense by like 30% and that re gets reduced to 15%, so minus 15 equals 15%, 
that's a much bigger deal. So if it's really just 15% weaker, period, like from its full state, that's not a huge deal. But yeah, they don't exactly specify that here. So I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see for that one. They still say increased defense will still have its presence despite the downgrade as it still remains one of the most powerful lasting effects in the game. Again, we'll have to see what that 15% really means. They also say they have a patch schedule to decrease the attack in some PVE content to sort of compensate for the defense buff being nerfed. And they say they're gonna be doing that to world difficulty in adventure mode and abyss. And then we get to the balancing discussion. Characters that will be getting buffed include Dingo, Coley, Euphine, which uh, one of my friends will appreciate that you know who you are, and Bal and Cezanne. I have Dingo. I hope he's gonna become good because right now he doesn't seem super interesting. Uh, I don't know much about Coley or Balance as on. I don't see many people talking about them, so so that's probably why they deserve a buff. And then of course we get to the nerfs. Tyria, Tyria, I have no idea. Elsin, of course. I'm not sure like if they mean just because the increased defense is getting nerfed and thus he is getting nerfed as a side effect to that, or if there's really something else happening to him. Rickerus, I believe, also has a defense up buff. The Axe God, revered as one of the most op, if not the most op three star in the game uh they're probably gonna like increase his cooldown of his third skill because it's like two turn cooldown for a two turn defense break at 80 percent chance that's definitely op but we'll have to see why is he getting nerfed though he was actually just decent why would he get nerfed mukacha he had like a 75 to 80 percent two turn defense down like axe but he already had a four turn cooldown so i don't think that's necessary but whatever and the artifact, I've heard so much about this artifact, I don't think I have it and don't think I even know what it does. But uh, since I've heard so much about it, it probably is overpowered. But unfortunately, just knowing who's getting nerfed and who's getting buffed doesn't tell us much until we actually see what's happening to them. And then these couple of paragraphs are basically just saying how careful they are with all these buffs and nerfs and balancing changes because, because that is a super sensitive thing for game developers to push on. There's always going to be pissed off, salty players, uh, regardless, even if they have this recall thing in there, which is uh, more than generous of them, you know, even if they have that in there, there's still going to be tons of salty players, uh, regardless of what they do. And this is just trying to soften the blow, I guess. And here we get to the recall system, which again is awesome. It's like with this system, you're really not allowed to complain. I mean, sure, they're potentially taking away one of the characters you liked using, but on the other hand, you get literally everything you used on them back. Gold, experience, promotion ingredients, awakening ingredients, molagora, and catalysts that were used to nurture the character will be returned to your account. Most game companies just buff and nerf without you getting anything, without any option, just deal with it, you know? And I do have to say that in all of my experience seeing a, tons of different games with their buffs and nerfs, they're never really that significant. There's maybe only been a handful of instances where they actually completely destroyed a character, where they weren't even usable where they were shining in and they were like usable for something else then so just like completely destroyed but that is very rare so i wouldn't worry too much if you have a really favorite character in this nerf list um just wait and see if you really can't deal with the nerf then of course you can do the recall get everything back so these guys will be available for recall after next week's update they're also even allowing you to unequip equipment for free for a certain amount of time after the update. So we also got the Archdemon's Forces Challenge, the climax of the story, Eulogy for a Saint, new artifacts, new Moonlight characters, new special, new Moonlight characters. Okay, new specialty changes, as well as a variety of system improvements and bug fixes. Okay, well, in this tiny little, they mentioned a lot of things, but I don't think it actually goes into detail. Like, what are the new Moonlight characters? What's the new specialty changes? A variety of... Okay, yeah, this is just a dev note, so, and again, everything could be changing here, but uh, I thought it was interesting enough to want to discuss it. And of course, I'm going to go over the actual, like, official patch notes when they do drop. But until then, I guess that will pretty much do it. Make sure to tell me what you think about this developer note in the comments down below. Leaving a like if you did happen to enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time...